What is up? In this video, we're going to show you how to connect to your Raspberry Pi device over SSH without any peripheral devices such as a keyboard or a monitor. Because let's be honest, coding from the command line just looks cooler. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is take out our micro SD card. We're going to put it into a uh, card reader of some type. Doesn't matter what you use. Okay, I think I got it in there, hopefully. And I'm gonna throw that right into my USB here. And we're gonna see if it shows up as a listed drive. Okay, we do see it here, it's called boot. So what I'm gonna do is uh, flash the Raspberry Pi operating system, just in case folks haven't done that. If you've already done that, feel free to skip ahead so I'm going to come over to raspberrypi.org. We're going to download for Mac OS. We're going to open this up. And this should step us through flashing our operating system. OK, we should have a tool installed called Raspberry Pi Imager. Okay, we're going to choose a standard Raspberry Pi 32-bit. And then for storage, we're going to choose our removable 8 gigabyte micro SD card uh, named boot. Be careful with this. You don't want to overwrite the wrong drive. And we're going to go ahead and select write. It looks like the operating system is flashed. So let's open up Finder. All right, so flashing the operating system um, also ejected the drive. So I pulled it out of my computer, but I'm actually gonna put it back in so that the drive shows up because now we wanna add the uh, Wi-Fi details to the drive here. So if you go to the YouTube description, there's going to be two files. One is WPA underscore supplicant dot conf, and the other is just SSH. You can just click those and download those. I stood them up on Google Cloud Platform, so feel free to use that. And then we're going to go back into Finder. And if we go to Downloads, we should see our two files. So we're going to take both of these and we're just going to pull them over into boot. We're gonna go into boot, we'll sort by a modification so we can see them at the top. So SSH is literally just a blank file called SSH. It will signal to uh, Raspberry Pi when it's booted to enable SSH. And then WPA underscore supplicant.conf is where we're gonna put our Wi-Fi credentials. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click this. You can open with um, your text editor of choice. Okay, so for this file, we want to supply our network name and then network password. So one little caveat here is this will only work initially on a 2.4 gigahertz uh, network. A lot of routers these days are dual band and will transmit 2.4 frequency and 5 gigahertz frequency. It will not work if we try to connect to a 5 gigahertz frequency initially. You have to first connect to the 2.4 gigahertz network and then you can update the firmware over the internet and then once the firmware is updated it will support 5 gigahertz. So that's a key thing to keep in mind. So if you want to know uh, what frequency your Wi-Fi network is transmitting on Mac, you can click the Wi-Fi symbol here. Actually, um, you hold Option or Alt and then click the Wi-Fi symbol. And it'll give you some additional details about the network. So my network's called Yoda-7 and I have a dual band router. So this is my 5G, this is my 2.4G. And you can confirm that by looking at the channel, 2.4 gigahertz. So that's what I'm gonna use here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, place that name in here. So it's Yoda-7 2.4 
G. And then I'm going to throw my password in here. I'm going to go ahead and click save. I'm going to remove this. All right, so I'm going to pull out my drive here. I'm going to pull out the micro SD card. I'm going to insert it into my Raspberry Pi. And then we're going to go ahead and boot this thing up and see if we can't find it on the network. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and power this guy. So I'm just plugging in. I'm just giving it power. Let's see here. Okay. And then, okay. And then just want to make sure that we're using that outermost um, micro USB port that is for power. We see the light going on, so that looks promising. So we'll go back to our <clears throat> we'll go back to our terminal, and then we'll connect to it. Okay, so we do want to um, give the Raspberry Pi a little bit of time to boot up, because it should be booting up. Uh, just like any operating system and then and then it will connect to the Wi-Fi network so let's go ahead and pop open the terminal here so um, every device has an IP address but we don't know what that's gonna be and we can use the host name instead so the host name for these out of the box is um, raspberry pi dot local so if it's on the same network that I'm on we should be able to ping it um, within our terminal here. So I'm going to do ping raspberry pi dot local. And so this is actually good. This uh, means that the device is returning ping messages. So that means it's on the network. It's connected and that's great. But um, how do we get into it so we can program? So we use SSH for that. So I'm just going to do SSH pi because that's the default username we could do like root you know um, so pi at raspberry pi dot local um, so just real quick when I tried to connect I got an error because I've connected with another RSA fingerprint before and it's not uh, validating with this new raspberry pi so to correct that, I'm just going into uh, this folder here called, or this um, file here called known hosts, and I'm just going to remove those old entries using Vim. So you can see I'm right here. So I'm going to do dd, that deletes a line, dd, and I should be good. Um, and then we'll just rerun that ssh command. So ssh pi at raspberry pi dot local. And it's going to say, are you sure you want to uh, connect? We're going to say yes. OK, so the default username is pi. The default password is raspberry. OK, so we are now in our, um, OK, the terminal looks a little prettier now. And so um, this is our Raspberry Pi device. And um, and then just real quick, if you wanted to find the IP address of your device, you could log into your router admin page and navigate over to connected devices and it should list the IP. So here I am, that's Raspberry Pi 192.168.0.68. So I could also use that to connect over here if I wanted instead of the host name. Host name can be Raspberry Pi or Raspberry Pi dot local. Okay, the terminal looks a little prettier now. And so um, this is our Raspberry Pi device. If we wanted to find the um, desktop, we go to home, we go to Pi, we go to desktop, and now we can do all our programming. So, you know, I could, I could uh, write a file called, um, you know, job.js and um, Oops, uh, so apt get update. So like this is a real operating system. We could do anything we want. So apt get install vim, uh, apt install vim, apt install vim. It's been a while. Um, oh, permission denied. <laughs> I'm not reading the error message. So let's just go ahead and elevate ourselves to root. So sudo su dash. Uh, now you can see I am root. 
Uh, I want to go back to the desktop, so I'm going to do home. I'm going to do des or home pi desktop. Uh, I'm going to do app get update because this is a Linux operating system, so it's Debian based. Uh, so you know we're doing all our typical Linux Unix commands here, and um, and we can write a program to do whatever it is we want. Could be a server that stands on your network. Could be a proxy, firewall, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right. So now we have Vim, so we can um, we can edit files. That's awesome. So I don't know. Maybe we want to stand up a website. And, and serve it from our Raspberry Pi. So we could do app get install uh, nginx, which is um, proxy server software. Okay, and then uh, downloading that should have stood up a, um, a basic website. So uh, let's go ahead and curl localhost and validate that. Yeah, so, you know, welcome to Nginx. So now our Raspberry Pi Zero is actually acting as a web server for a website. So in theory, we could navigate over to raspberrypi.local. And look, we're getting our website. Um, so like, and really to, to nail that point home, um, let's go to... Um, Let's go to var. So I want to find the directory where Nginx stores its HTML. I think it's here. And because I installed Vim, we can edit that HTML file. So let's go ahead and delete this. And then let's do um, you know h1. Uh, welcome to our Raspberry Pi hosted website. Okay, and then I think if we refresh this, yeah, so, you know, there's just tons of stuff you could do with your Raspberry Pi. Um, one other thing we might want to do is update the firmware on the Raspberry Pi so that it supports the 5 gigahertz frequency band. So I actually don't know the best way to do that, so I'm going to search that real quick. All right, so it looks like we just have to do sudo apt update sudo apt full upgrade and then restart so apt update i'm already sudo so i don't need to put that Okay, so that firmware update did take what seemed like an eternity, so keep that in mind. Um, before we reboot uh, for that to take effect, let's go ahead and change the default password, which is just a kind of good um, precaution to take. So currently I'm logged in as root. I'm gonna actually back out to pi, and I wanna change the password on pi. So what I'm gonna do is the command is P, it's past WD. All right, so current password is raspberry. That's the default password. I'm gonna give it a new password. Okay, see the connection was closed, which is what I would expect if it was, um, uh, if, if it's being turned off. Um, and then to determine if it turned back on, we can just run our ping command again. See, we're not gonna get any response until it finished boots, uh, finishes booting up. So we'll give it a second here. I actually just shut it off. Um, if you want to reboot, you could just do sudo reboot. Um, so what I'm going to do to turn it back on is I'm just going to disconnect the power, reconnect it.
All right, so we're gonna log back into our Raspberry Pi. And now I'm using the new password that we created. And um, so it turns out that the different Raspberry Pi devices have varying levels of support for 5G. The Raspberry Pi Zero does not support 5G. It seems like uh, the Pi 3 on firmware update will support 5G. Um, but just Google whether it does or doesn't. It really doesn't matter. Like 5G is not necessarily better than 2.4. They're just they have different properties in terms of uh, like distance, proximity, bandwidth, strength, and that sort of thing. Anyways, that's all I got for this tutorial. Thanks for listening.